So before we actually get to the mathematics, just take a moment to center yourself, or longer if needed, so that when you actually start thinking about maths, your brain and your body are all focused on that. So we're going to begin this course by looking at one of the most fundamental mathematical concepts, that of a set, which I'm sure that you've seen before, but because it is so fundamental, we're going to spend some time making sure we all have the same definition and understand the same thing. So the definition that we're going to use is that a set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects called elements. The first thing you might notice about this definition is that it includes two words which we haven't actually defined. So if you have a look, we haven't really said what we mean by a collection or an object. And in fact, we're not going to. We're going to use our intuition. If this is feeling a bit weird, think about when you learnt geometry. You were never actually given a definition of a point or a line, but you used those a lot to do lots and lots of geometry. You used your intuition. And we're going to use the same thing here. But there are two words that we really do need to talk about and make sure that we understand. So the first is, what does it mean to be well-defined. And here what we mean is given any item, any object, we can decide if it's in the set or not in the set. So we can decide if something is in or out of the set and there's no debate there. And the second thing we want to think about is what does distinct mean. So distinct we're saying we're not allowing any duplicate objects. So there is another mathematical concept called a multiset, which does allow duplicates, but for our purposes, no duplicates. So now that we've got an idea of what a definition of a set is, the best way to check that we really understand that definition is to look at some examples of sets. So I'm going to claim that the collection of UCT students registered for MAM 1008S in 2019 is a set. And if we think back to the definition, there are a few things we need to check. So it is a collection, and there are objects, in this case UCT students. But we also need to check the two conditions, that we can clearly define who's in and who's out, and we also need to make sure that each object is distinct. Well, if we have a look at well-defined, it certainly is a well-defined collection. You hand me any human, and I can decide whether they are a UCT regis student registered for MAM1008S in 2019 or not. So we do have a well-defined, and are d the items in this collection distinct? Well, yes, they are. Um, we won't have the same student registered twice, hopefully. So we've checked our collection of UCT students registered for our course, is well-defined and distinct, and so we have a set. If we look at a slightly more mathematical example, we can consider the integers strictly bigger than zero and less than five. So again, doing a quick check, this is a collection of objects. In this case, the objects are our integers, and we want to do a quick check. Is it well-defined? Well, yes it is. If you give me any integer, um, I can look at it and say if it's bigger than zero and less than five, it's in, otherwise not. And pretty much anything other than integers is out. So it is well defined. And we want to check, are any of the objects duplicated? Nope. Because the integers aren't duplicated. So there we have two good examples of sets. But at this point you might be thinking, well, okay, um, are there any collections that are not sets? And this is an important thought to have any time you meet, you meet a new definition. You want to think about what are the things that almost meet the definition, but not quite. So let's have a look at that now. So suppose I'm thinking about the collection of the five best football players. So that's certainly a collection, and then there are objects, which are football players. But notice that as soon as we try to do a check, the first thing we want to check is our, well let's just write down, so we've got 
distinct and also well defined. So let's have a look at those. If you give me any football player, it's not well defined whether they would be in this set or not because we don't really know what best means and we haven't even talked about things like living football players, dead football players. So in this case, this is not a set, even though it's a collection, because it's not well defined. So we have not a set. On the other hand, if we have a look at the collection of the number of courses each MAM 1008S student is registered for, then again, we're going to see that this is not a set. So if you imagine what this collection would look like, it would be a list of numbers. For example, the first person registered might be registered for four courses, someone else might be registered for three, and then someone else for four, and suddenly you start to see the problem. We're getting duplicates. So when we do our check, any number is well defined, we can say whether it's in our collection or not, but we're going to get duplicates. So we've spent quite a lot of time thinking about this definition of a set, possibly more time than you ever spent on a definition before. And this is really a key skill to master if you're going to be doing any more maths. So the thing that I generally do when I encounter a new definition is kind of a three-step process. The first thing I do is I make sure that I understand every single word in the definition. And sometimes as you go along, that might mean making sure that you understand other definitions, definitions within definitions. But it's really important to do that. The next trick is to find some examples of things that match the definition. So we did that, we found two collections that were definitely sets, and that was kind of helpful. But for myself, I sometimes find that finding examples of things that almost match the def definition, but not quite, can be even more instructive. So if you go back to the previous two examples, we found things that were collections, but not sets, and in different ways they failed the set definition. So get into the habit, every time you see a definition, of following these three steps to just really deeply understand what you've learned.